Right guys, welcome back to the Beautiful Struggle Podcast with myself, Jay Davis, aka Magic Eye. Thank you to everyone that's tuned in to the last few episodes. We've had amazing views both on YouTube and also the socials. So keep supporting, liking, sharing, and we've got all that shit out of the way. Last thing, TBSP for any money off heavy duty gym wear. Go to the website and obviously add it at the checkout. So another episode. And I am on home soil for once, not driving three hours to get a podcast done. Thank fuck. There's going to be a lot of fucks in this one, I think, so I may as well start it off on the right note. <laughs> um, 30 minute drive today down to GAH Gym to, uh, to meet my next guests. And I put an S on the end because there's two of them today. I'm being double teamed. And that isn't a porn reference for anyone that uh, <laughs> has got that in their, in their mind, so get that out of your thoughts. Um, but we go way back, like to just to give you a little bit of a backstory. I first got in touch with these guys nine years ago now, and um, I'd already done a year on my own, kind of training and dieting horrendous, horrendously to get down to racing snake condition. And then uh, I wanted to take it a bit more seriously, so I googled bodybuilding coaches South Wales, and then this this name popped up. Empower bodybuilding. I thought, Fuck, yeah. this is serious now. <laughs> this is legit. So I clicked on it. There was no Instagram then. It was uh, Twitter and just the website. So I had a look at the pictures and all the video content and like some of the text and stuff. And then uh, I wanted to see who these people are. So I click on there and I see see this name that I didn't know how to pronounce. But I was like, I, I, I googled South Wales bodybuilding coaches. I was expecting Di Edwards to pop up, but instead <laughs> I had these. This name, and I was like, right, okay, so let's go down. So I had a consultation, give me my first off season plan, which was probably sub 3,000 calories, and I remember struggling to eat all the food. And then the rest is history, as they say. Yeah. And we are now nine years on. Um, hopefully, I, I use bodybuilding lightly in like when I first started, but hopefully, I'm a bit of a better bodybuilder now that uh, nine years deep. Um, so, welcome in to the Beautiful Struggle podcast. Anton Deck, aka Mike and Lisa Kelsey. <laughs> <laughs> Anton Deck, because Mike said he's got to be on the left, Lisa's got to yeah, be on the right. Yeah. And that's how they come. They come as a pair. So thank you for coming on. How are you both? Pretty cool. Pretty yeah, cool? Good, yeah. yeah. Cold good. or cool? Oh, she's no, always cold. Always cold. Yeah, always today cold. is positively tropical today. <laughs> 14 layers on. Yeah. <laughs> Colour coded, though. Ovs. I made an effort. I can see that. I appreciate yeah, it. That's I appreciate quite all right. it. Um, so I've wanted to get you guys on for a while because number one, you're well respected in the industry. You've been around a long time. We won't touch on age, but you've been around enough to see the changes throughout the years in the industry yeah. and where we're at right now. So I thought rather than going into like the backstory behind the, you both, I thought we'd start like right now with where we are right now in the industry so without uh well i said you know without going into f too much detail because laz said you can talk from oh, preliminary all your content yeah, yeah. so <laughs> as much detail as you want to go in what do you think of the current state of like the the bodybuilding industry where we're at right now the floor is yours Lise. <laughs> <laughs> that's a big question i to can start see the cogs <laughs> a big question um obviously as far as I'm concerned, where my standing in bodybuilding at the moment is very much as yes, a prep coach and posing coach and stuff like that. But judging is, is what's in me. That's, that's where I am at the moment. And there's a... I'm really going to try and... Let it out. <laughs> there's some things at the moment that disappoint me, I think is the word. It really does disappoint me in as far as... Um, it's gone from the art of bodybuilding, it's gone from something that was so um, driven by passion. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's what it is. But at the moment, I feel it's being driven by money. Now, that is what disappoints me. Because obviously, the reason why we've been in it for so long is our passion for the activity, for the sport, for the self awareness it brings people, the self. Um, confidence it brings people and that's what got us into it and that's what got me into it yeah. and still drives me now um, and obviously my commitment to um, competing then going over to judging is just so strong um, 
at every level and I still have the utmost respect, no matter what anybody thinks, the utmost respect for competitors. Because I still understand what you're going through. I mean, I go through it myself. I still appreciate how much work goes into competing. So for me to be able to make sure that the right people get the right placings in the sport is what drives me that, you know, and you know, I really do love it. But at the moment, it's gone to a place that I find is a little distasteful mm -hmm. in as far as, as I said, it's driven by money. It's um, what people are happy to charge people for their um, naivety, really, yeah. into coming into this sport. At the moment, I find, as I say, it leaves a nasty taste in my mouth. Um, somebody came to me this week and told me how they'd found a uh, opposing coach online in the Bristol area. I don't know who it is, so okay. I'm not, a, you know, I'm not trying to... I was hoping for a name drop then. So no, could, uh, I really, really <laughs> don't. Get some views. But what I really d found a little, as I say, disface distasteful is the fact that she's happy to charge somebody £180 an hour. Wow, okay. An hour. Yeah. And the bit that did it for me and as i said going on a little bit of a rant now sorry everybody <laughs> um is we've got junior doctors fighting for 14 pounds an hour mm. and they're saving lives we are so lucky to be part of other people's journeys to success and what we can bring to them yeah. and you're charging over life-saving money that's crazy you about that that's what just yeah, that oh, is I don't ridiculous like it. and no likey you could say on one hand that's the person who's paying its fault yeah but then i think it just seems to be that almost some you know you know what it's like in this industry if you want to call it an industry um people are can, can be a bit vulnerable yeah um i think when they want to be a part of something so much as yes. well sometimes they'll and then, pay anything, then it's the thing yeah. oh well that's that much they're much more than anybody else so it must be good yeah um and People give them the spiel, I like, can do this for you, and I like, can do that, and people mm. will believe it. Yeah, you know, and and if you look at it, I mean, there's more and more posing coaches as we're talking about that yeah. now. More and more and more. I don't think the posing is getting any better. No, and when you, <laughs> no, no, but when you think really, we and yet yeah, I am that we started posing courses, right? We started posing courses when the introduction of bikini came back into bodybuilding because. Up until that time, there was no bikini, there was no men's physique, there was nothing. It was just bodybuilding. Yeah. Figure bodybuilders, that's all it was. And even female bodybuilding was a lightweight, a middleweight, and a heavyweight. That's it. Mm. So there wasn't even really figure per se. Nope. Um, so, as I said, it's lovely that the industry is where it is now, that it is open to so many competitors, yeah. so many athletes, you know, just people that come to gyms and inspired and think, yeah, I can do it. And yes, they can, they can do it. Mm. Um, but it, again, the whole point of bodybuilding for me is the fact it's open to everybody. And as I've always said, a dumbbell never ever knows who picks it up. It picks, it's being picked up by a millionaire, it's being picked up by, by a bin man. And that's what is so good about this sport. But it's getting to the point, it's starting to become a little bit of an elitist sport because people who want to do it and can do it and can achieve can't afford to do it. Yeah. And it's like, that's not what bodybuilding is about. Mm. Um, and the other thing I'm going to, as you say, we'll just park that for a minute. The other thing I'm going to say about where bodybuilding is at the moment is some of the physiques are starting to go into directions that it's not what it's about. Unachievable looks, whether it be men that are getting too big, whether they be bikini girls that are getting too too lean, right? Yeah. And whose fault is that? It's the judge's fault. If we keep praising them and we keep rewarding them and we keep placing them, this is what competitors feel and think this is what the look is. Mm. So I would love to be in a position to start to, and obviously where I am with uh, a this present moment with different federations I hopefully will be in a place that I can start to make sure that the judges actually look at the criteria that you put out yeah. for your athletes to follow and make sure the judges put those criteria athletes in the places 
otherwise, what's the point of a criteria? Yeah, I remember it was a few years ago. There was a big thing. Arnold started going on about the bellies in yeah, bodybuilding. Yeah, Phil, wasn't it, I think. Yeah. yeah. Um, but then, and there was a big thing on. Obviously, it was on Facebook at the time. Big discussions, you know. And there was some big names on there. And, yeah. Um, I just made a comment and was like, you know, Arnold was having this big rant about bellies, and I said. Hang on, isn't the Arnold an invitation show? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, don't invite them then. Yeah. You know, so it's like, don't say one thing on one hand and then try and don't yeah. do anything about it on the other hand. Yeah. And as Lisa said, she's as a judge, it's 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 our, our responsibility. responsibility to do yeah. that. Um, there was a spate recently of females dying from yeah. diuretic. Yeah. yeah. And then you can. Obviously, when in this game, things certain things are going to be used. But when it's overuse, and then but then when the judges are rewarding those looks, mm. what else are other people going to do? You're yeah. perpetuating yeah. it. They're pressuring them into into doing that. Yes, then. and I must admit, um, God, how long ago was that that seminar with Dorian in Bridge End in Pyle with Kerry Case? How long was that? No, it wasn't Dorian. It was, um, it was Dorian. It was that. No, if he won there, where did we see him? Well, anyway, oh, right. Cardiff. And yes. we went to see Dorian. And the one thing I'll apl- I, that I did applaud him for is, you know, questions, questions. Obviously, first question, gear. Yeah. And took my hat off to the guy because he sat there and he said, "I'm not telling you." I said, "I'm not telling you." He said, "There's no big secrets. There's nothing to hide." I said, he said, but I'm telling you now, if I said I did A, B, and C as Mr. Olympia, he said, I guarantee you'll go, if you can look like that with A, B, and C, I'm going to do D, E, and F. And that's right. Yeah. You know, but as I said, so for me, the things and the, the um, products they're pushing, is it helping the physiques? Is it making a better physique? No. Uh, a photo came up on Facebook and it was something like um, 1993. Wow. The physiques were incredible. Yeah. So, is this sport getting better? No. We're st- we're almost thirsty for freaks, but those freaks are putting themselves in such a dangerous place and such a predicament for how their lives go forward. Mm. Is that right? No. And I think no. because of social media and all those physiques now are readily available for everybody to see yeah. everyone's aspiring to be those but they haven't got to that level yet yeah. um, I mean something we've always said is amateur and professional bodybuilding are like two separate sports mm. it's like amateur and professional boxing way way different yeah yeah so it's like but you haven't got there yet you know so don't try and emulate that mm. Yeah. You know, don't run before you can walk, quite yeah, simply. Yeah. You know? yeah. And too many people are asking the questions of supplementation and things like that before they've even done two years under their belt. Yeah. And it's, it's like, whoa, 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 whoa. You know, longevity. Yeah. As you, you did spend <laughs> how long we've been in it. And I just thought then, next year, next year, I would, never mind him, I would have been doing this for 40 years. You know, 40 years. Mm. Everything still works. Yeah. Everything's still good. That was another point that you made. You said nine years. Yeah. Were you doing it? And that's the thing. It's like, it takes a long yeah. time. Yeah. And yeah. within this atmosphere at the moment, it's like, oh, it's got to be done in 12 weeks. It's got. It doesn't. It takes... I don't yeah. know if you saw... It was probably a couple of months ago. I was ha- just happened to be training in the gym. Lisa was training somebody. Yeah. And just like, I was training legs. And there was some sort of banter going on, and Lisa said, Mike, show Steve your legs. Oh, I see the picture. Yeah, then yeah, Matthew yeah, Ali, he was in the gym, and he oh, took yeah, some yeah. pictures, and they ended up, and it was like, you know, and people were like, yeah, making nice comments, etc., yeah. which is great. But then a couple of weeks after that, there was a guy in the gym, and he said to me, Oh, what's the secret? You're <laughs> building legs. And I said, Training hard for 40 odd years. Yeah. And he went, Ah, oh, shit. You yeah. know, and it's like, but. That's it. Just takes yeah, a long um, time. I call it the pot noodle generation because simply add water, and that's yeah, kind of how quickly yeah, we're yeah, on it. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Absolutely. With everything, right. like obviously, I do a little bit of coaching, and I get yes. people coming to me that have that have never even stepped foot in the gym, and I'll send them plans, and then we know what questions yeah. come in, and I'm like, you got no business. You got yeah, no business asking those questions yet. Yeah. yeah. 
you've got no business and i think it summed up the and social media is obviously it's a tool yeah i understand that it personally this is my opinion and i'm terrible for it i think it's an opportunity for the devil to speak yeah because everybody sits behind whether their phones the computers or whatever can say what they like they have the right to that's great but it just allows devils to speak yes it's bringing more people into the sport into gyms and things like that i get it but the leveler for me was when somebody came and they said um want to do a, a bikini competition yeah yeah sweet no problem um i got my bikini um i'm having my uh, extensions done in a fortnight my shoes will be here three weeks later you know da, 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 this that and i said right okay that's cool uh, right what's your training split what you know and she's, sorry <laughs> so your training split yeah. you know what 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 do you mean i said well how do you train oh i've never been in the gym oh, for now. and she bought the bikini she ordered the shoes her head extensions were coming yeah and you and they said come back in two years babe that's the thing that we always and it wasn't that long ago we'd have the conversation of oh you you start training and then maybe further down the line you start thinking about competing yeah. but now people think about competing before, before they've, they've even started yeah. training you yeah. know they're training because they uh no they're doing a show so they start training yes yeah. rather than the other way around and i understand that obviously men and women want to put their best looks out i get that yeah. absolutely get it but it's it's almost it's a very glamorous pastime at the moment because obviously fit is, is far better than fat yeah. yeah absolutely no problem but it's almost like that glamour look to it like you know you the girls are looking like the kardashians or oh, that must be the thing mm. compete no the girls are looking like they are because they work bloody hard yes. but people just you know so i'll shut up now <laughs> you weren't lying laz <laughs> So that's uh, the podcast done. Thank you. Very <laughs> <laughs> no, that's uh, that's good. That's a good start. And I wanted to start there because uh, obviously it's you guys see it as much as both me and Laz being in the industry, going around doing shoots and stuff, and having the conversations, and then obviously you know with the coaching stuff as well. So take note from that. Anyone that's new to it, thinking about doing it, or I think the one thing for me I can say just for my experience. I've got on you guys so early on in it. I remember you said like, uh, well, I say that first show I did in 2016. I did it on a, on a whim, like a five yeah. days out yeah. or something. And then I was like, I'm never doing that again. And they were like, yeah, it's not for everyone. But then it took me, how many years? Like fucking six yeah. years, yeah, like yeah. six, yeah. seven years yeah, yeah. to come back to that moment. And obviously, well, you've seen the difference when I came yeah, back yes, to you with yeah. posing then, what, what I've done. So, yeah, take note of time is your best friend with it. Oh, 100%. Yeah. 100%. Don't rush it. Yeah. Um, so that's that out of the way. The the story of Mike and Lisa. When did you... Because I've never asked you this anyway. When did you guys first meet? Did, they meet, did you meet through bodybuilding? No. no. Karate. Karate. Yeah. So Total. we were both um, fighting for the Welsh team um, at the time, and so. But of course, the thing is, through it, it's and we obviously we were married at twenty-two, so we were babies. Yeah. But everything that we did, even then, we did it together, and not oh, you know, we spent some. No, no, no. Karate is what we did. We both understood and respected the fact to be the level we wanted to be. You had to train six seven eight times a week that's what we did yeah and um, so we understood that whereas a lot of couples will meet when things are good um the one or another looks absolutely amazing because you know they're getting ready for prep and body's looking great but then they fall apart or they can fall apart when they appreciate or don't appreciate how hard it is to be committed to any activity at a high level mm -hmm. whereas we had that already because we were both at that level of understanding that, like, you should we go out tonight? No, I can't. I got to do this. That, and the, all right. Well, are you coming over tonight? No, I can't. I got to do that. Yeah, okay. Because yeah. we get it. We absolutely got it, and we still get that now. Um, through, and we've done everything together. We've grown up together. So from karate and our understanding of weight bearing exercise and how it can improve, because there wasn't strength and conditioning then, was there? No, it was on the I thing. mean. I was fighting for the Welsh under-21 team when I was 16. 
Okay. So it was like fighting men, basically, when I was still a teenager. Yeah. You know, and I wasn't very big. And, you know, a couple of the guys in the team said, well, you know, start tra- I'd, I'd got a weight set when I was like 14, 15, and used to train in the basement at home. But, yeah. you know, started to take it a little bit more seriously. You know, like the discipline, that approach, that disciplined approach. Obviously, I know you had it, like, through karate. Did you have it before karate, or could did kind of karate instill it into you? Um, right, you, when did you go into karate? I was 14, but I was always into sport. Yeah. So I played football for the school team. I was captain of the rugby team. I um, did athletics. I was actually, believe it or not, at my height, I was um, played basketball for South Wales. Really? Yeah. Um, so and I was and I'd go like luckily where we lived there was a school playing field at the back and I would literally go out there for hours on my own kicking a ball around rugby ball um in the mm. summer I'd be hitting a tennis ball against the wall on my own yeah you know and I so maybe slightly different <laughs> as Bless far as him. <laughs> <laughs> one two three ah no but but kind of and then obviously with karate when I started yeah. at 14, I was probably one of the youngest in the class. Now, these days, I mean, our brother-in-law still yeah. teaches. You're probably one of the older ones now. Oh, yeah, you yeah. know. So, I mean, I was in karate classes with men, and the discipline that taught me, Sammy, uh, yeah. stood me in good stead for yeah. the gym. But, of course, me karate, as Mike just said, my brother still runs his own uh, association and, and everything else. But I was doing. I was in the dojo at four years old, so yeah. that commitment to sport is just always, always been, been around I've you. I've never known any difference. So when people say, "Oh, I can," I think I can manage two or three times a week. What you don't do that now? Oh, you don't new activity. Oh, okay, okay. I just, it's I mad, just yeah. don't understand it's it because to you. it is literally. It, it's been literally in our lives ever since we were babies. Yeah, four or five times a week. You know, so that is just, but that's where we met was through karate. And from there, as you say, we got into weight bearing exercise. And I'll never forget, and it was an off the cuff remark that I had just flipped everything on his head because I was good at karate and not, no, no because we trained so much. Yeah, yeah. you had no choice. Yeah. You were literally, there was um, a stick called a shin eye. And if you didn't, you just got hit. So he was like, yeah, okay, I'll do it. So the discipline there, as you say, set us for life but I was using a cable crossover and somebody walked past and said, oh, I can see that's working. Oh, never. What do you mean? <laughs> and literally within that moment, my reasons just completely changed. Yeah, just that split. split. That's a, literally an off-the-cuff remark like yeah. that. Yeah. And karate was something I did and we were, and we were good at it because that's what we just did and did and did. But you could literally go, you compete in on Sunday and you go, oh, no. He's like, and this would be Friday. Oh, well, I put you in for the tournament. <sighs> and you got and not but I go in and win yeah right so we were just efficient at it then let's say that but this every time we come in it was just thirst for more mm. you just you know we just drunk it up you know and everything about this and as you say yeah karate is still part of our life and our family but not the passion not yeah. the just as they say the thirst for just improvement every single day you yeah know? and it just it is it just gets under your skin skin doesn't it be like you <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i'd say that's like the difference in what we talked about at the start like the generation difference is like you don't really have that you do have it but in small portions but you don't have that person that's thirsty for it like, yeah. like you put it thirsty and hungry for it and as you say that's where social media really we didn't have social media you know you'd wait desperately for the magazine to come through to see who'd won the Olympia yeah. you know you'd you'd have half you'd have half a training programme but you'd have to wait for next month for the other <laughs> half you know so yeah. that it's almost like tantalising you whereas now click yeah and that, that's okay. the way again you know? people mm. make money through social media now don't they funny yeah. enough I was I've been listening to a couple of podcasts lately with um, Tom Platts. Yeah, and he was saying uh, in I think it was the late seventies he won the universe. It was the IFBB universe, not the NABBA universe. Um, but he was said he was talking to Frank Zane, and he was like, Fra- "I'm I'm broke." Frank Zane was a teacher, and he said, "Well, well, I'll get into teaching." Yeah, and Frank said, 
no, don't. He said, you've got something special. He said, don't forget, you've done the universe, but those magazine pictures aren't going to be coming out for two months. He said, trust me, you'll be getting phone calls in a couple of months for guest spots and, mm. and all the rest of it. And, and, that's all he, did. and yeah. he did, you yeah. know. Um, whereas now... You can it's, you get you can make that money straight away, can't you? Yeah. You know, Pe- people want it straight away. Yes. As well. Yeah. Again. And and I understand where we are in society, you know, because the thing is, it's being made so obvious. You can make money from being an influencer, and you can make through social media. I, I get it, because I mean, celebrity get me out of here. It's like who? Oh, you know, influencers. Like, yeah. Oh, that's that's a real thing. Okay, all right, fine, all right, I understand. So the drive and the passion is more for social media rather than for For self themselves themselves. whereas everything we did was Mm. for us yeah you know and it's just it's just a different time and i i understand that yeah and the 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 guys that do it for that that you do it are the ones that excel in the sport that we all but that all these people that think they've got it but haven't got it they're the ones that they're looking all looking up to and they're excelling in the sport because they do it for them, not for yes. the likes yeah. and the kudos online. Yeah. 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 Who influenced you then? In terms of idols, both of you, like coming up. Did you influence each other? Fuck no. <laughs> Can hell. Was there any... I'll, I'll be straight, like, obviously... You guys have been mentors to me over the last nine years. There's like three, four people, I would say now, that have been key parts of me getting to where I am today with my own personal bodybuilding. And that's you both. Obviously, Carl, who coaches me, and Jordan, because they've just... And Corin as well, but just because of the chats that we have. Yes. Yeah. And how it's kind of... How I've been like a sponge soaking that up. So who was that to you? Did you have anyone like that? No. No, all jokes aside, yeah, him, you know. I thought you might say it. Yeah, because, again, because as you said, we grew up together, we found things out together, because as you said, you had to wait for something to come. You had to wait for information to come. Um, But as far as um, visual aspiration, I was always more... um, responsive to men rather than to women and not because I come from a sport where I had to fight men yeah because so of course I was always I used to fight as part of the Welsh team but I used to fight as anchor man you know because I mean when I in karate I didn't give a shit we just fought each other you know I had two brothers and all they wanted to do was beat the piss out of me yeah so male influence in activity and sport was I was in and I so I was always inspired you know and the respect that I offered male bodybuilders not that I didn't offer it to women that's not what I'm saying but it was like wow Mm -hmm. you could do that to your body oh my god that's incredible so that's what did it and of course the thing is seeing then how we develop but seeing how he and your physique developed was like shit this shit's good yeah you saw it first hand then 100% yeah because you say where you took your physique from being a karateka then to be in a competitive um, bodybuilder, but then to be going up the levels through that com- competition, it's just like, this is good shit. Yeah. You got, I'm hooked, you know, and that's the way Yeah, you and do I it. think everyone talks about genetics in bodybuilding, and it is a major part, but obviously I had a certain amount, but I don't think I ever had the best genetics. You know, everyone likes to think you know, when they start off training, you know, and you really get into it and you start competing, oh, I'm going to get my pro card. And it's like, <laughs> oh, no, yeah. you know, I, I sort of pro. quite yeah, soon yeah, yeah. realised that that wouldn't happen. Yeah. So I just did the best with what I had. Um, and I think it's just over and above anything else. It was just the passion for training. Yeah. Mm. That's what started it all. You know, yeah. and we still got it now. Yeah. You well, know. even this morning. Right, should we change the training split? Right, let's say, keep thinking, keep bringing more to the to you, to your own pot. Yeah, I suppose, and that's the thing, I've been equally influenced by Lisa, and I, I still am on a day-to-day basis, because pretty much she, you know, if, you, if we told you what she eats, she's like on prep, like, every day. You know, and 
you did when did you do the photo shoot uh, October last year yeah. you know and yeah. still in, in amazing shape you know um, as far as within bodybuilding you know apart from yeah. me so I don't know if it, it'd have to be Tom Platts yeah so my yeah. like obviously I've mentioned him yeah. already um, and I know obviously he was known for legs and I suppose I kind of was to a certain extent Mike the leg um, yeah, is to a certain extent <laughs> but no what I liked about him was the way he spoke the passion yeah um, you know and if you look at some of the old seminars on YouTube etc mm -hmm. you know he he just had that way about him yeah. and the the training how intensely he trained I maybe there would be certain bits that I wouldn't do of his <laughs> yeah, yeah you know but there would be certain things that I would do yeah you know mm. but it was just yeah I mean he just gave it absolutely everything and again not a guy with the best genetics you know in yeah. fact on one of the podcasts he was saying you know um, about when he should have won the Olympia in 81 everyone says that and he said well that was the best thing that ever happened to me yeah. because he made a career on not winning the or Olympia winning. yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it's about, again, that, that's it, it's about making the best of you can of every situation. Oh, yeah, definitely, yeah. 100%. Mm -hmm. um, when did you guys start dip, dipping into coaching then, off the back of, like, your own bodybuilding when you transitioned over? When did you feel, actually, I'll rephrase that question, when did you feel ready to coach other people? Out to everyone that's coaching. I know when, well, roughly when I started. So we've been in where we're living now since 1999. Yeah, that's, yeah. So how many years ago was that? Was it 99, you say? Yeah. yeah. What's that? 25. But the previous house we were in, I remember yeah. there would be guys coming over, three or four, and they'd come over the house and I'd go through their diets and whatever. So that's like over 25 years ago. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. So quick math, that would be you it's close doing training 15 years at that yeah, point? 40 years you said you've yeah. been training? Yeah, yeah. So you've been doing it 15 years before you decided to yeah, help Yeah, yeah. and it things. wasn't, yeah. you know, you nobody called anybody a coach no, no. then, or it was like you'd help, help people. people out, yeah. And that's all it was. There was no money involved with that. Yeah. You know, it was a couple yeah. of guys from the same gym that I trained at, and they, you know, local guys who were doing local shows, and they'd come oh, over yeah. and, yeah. So, and it just kind of went from there then. It's a bit different to now, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. It, was, it was probably not far, 30 years ago, actually. Mm. 30 years ago. Yeah. Yeah, that's And you'd literally write their diets out on a scrap of paper. Yeah. Which, you know, I know... Uh, but at least you know, you know, back then, that wasn't copy and pasted. No, you no. You were sat in front of somebody, right, and you wrote it out. Yeah, yeah. There you go, you that's know? A, that's how it was done. Yes. Yeah. I remember well the plan I had off you when I first came down here nine years ago. I had um, a printout. Yeah. A printout on my. I had a. I had about six, seven pieces of paper with like different information on there, and then my diet. See, we went yeah. all high tech then. <laughs> Printouts. <laughs> no Google Drives or apps or anything then. Yeah. Yeah. Now my argument on that is, you know, and I know there's there are good coaches out there, not but then. There's these apps that a lot of coaches use, yeah. and my argument is, well, why don't the people who are being coached just get the app? Yeah. I know coaches that have got apps where they don't even have to do anything. They sign yeah. them up to the app, and they will, the client will check in, yep. and say their weight hasn't budged. The app will automatically adjust everything, and send an auto-reply, and it's like they're communicating with this person. That is just and they're just sitting there so honestly wrong. and they're just taking people's money I don't know how they can do it yeah well, I mean I tell you what go to Weight Watchers yeah there's a classic well. example of that that is you say that's um, a whole industry reliant on people fucking up and then yeah. doing it every year because yeah. if Weight Watchers actually worked there'd be nobody going to Weight Watchers no. anymore would they no, you know um, it's that thing yeah people can you know if people want to make money that's cool yeah, but you've all, also it. got to be able to look at yourself in the mirror yeah yeah. You've got to have some morals about you. Yes. A hundred percent. And again, now you've got me on there. <laughs> a look out. Have you got a pillow? <laughs> <laughs> Sit down. Right? Take it easy. Take a load off. Now, as we said, total respect. If you're going to earn the money, you want to that no problem, right? But can you all just do me the biggest of favour? Don't flaunt your cash 
that you're making off on people who are working so hard to be able to fucking pay you. Now that really pisses me <laughs> off. Really does. I've, Got my real lip. Yeah. <laughs> I've just, just announced a respect for the people of how hard they're working to pay you this monthly fee yeah. for you to sit there and go look at my wad in your fucking flash car. Oh, yeah. Just have a bit of respect for the people who are in it. Spend your money as you wish. That's not what I'm saying. No, no. But as I said, the thing is, at the end of the day, you may have that junior doctor that's earning £14 an hour and they want to be a competitor. They work bloody hard for their money. And then all of a sudden, you're sat there in your convertible this and your fritz this and your... Va- just, pl- please, just don't be so crass. Have a bit of respect for the people who are paying you. <sighs> Sorry, Jake, carry on. <laughs> oh, it's gone quite cold in here all of a sudden. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um... What would you say, or, yeah, for both of you then, in terms of the coaching, do you prefer one-to-one training a year with the clients or taking someone to stage? Mm. Well, I'll answer it. It'd be quick on my part. I don't anymore. You don't do it anymore at all? No. Nope. Um, obviously, busier with the gym. Yeah. Plus, then, with the shows, I mean... You know what it's like with Lisa, she's PTing all the time, etc., etc. So mm-hmm. then when we've got a show coming up, I'll get all the paperwork ready, organise all the travel arrangements, and the gym obviously takes up a lot of time as well. Yeah. Um, and also, I, d- I haven't really got that passion for coaching people anymore. Yeah, I mean, well. I, um, I'm not saying I'd never do it, and I still train maybe the odd person, but I, I was doing a lot of um, online training sessions, not no nutrition involved, because I, I kind of preferred that. But then I'd see videos, and I was always particular of how I wanted somebody to perform an exercise. And they were generally maybe experienced people. So, right, I want your reps performed like this, in this rep range, blah, blah, blah. And then I'd see a video that they put up and I'm like fuck up I didn't tell you to do it like that you know and then you think well what's the bloody point yeah and again I could just take their money but it's like it's not about that is it no no so I'm just concentrating on the gym and the shows and that sort of thing so easy on my part Lisa (laughs) get comfortable (laughs) (sighs) all right then no truth what do I like I'm I have online I'm not a fan of it because I just like people I like to be face to face. I like to see how they perform. I like to click with people. Yeah. You know, I like to, you know, and and I really don't mind if they've got no intention of ever going on the stage. If they do go on the stage, yet yeah, I prep people and everything else, and I am happy to be part of that journey. I mean, I I never ever advertise on on social media ever. You'll never see me. This is my client. Blah, blah. Because it's not me. I don't do the work. Yeah. I encourage, I nurture, I s- shuffle along. And yep, you did a brilliant job. I'm so proud of you. But I am done it. I am being the one at four o'clock in the morning on the treadmill. I am done that. So why should I take any form of praise for it when I haven't actually done the physical work? Mm. Yes, I've been part of the journey. And yes, I've encouraged and I've nurtured and I've done everything. And that is reward enough when I see them doing well. I see how their physiques are improving see how their passion is growing that to me is my success right not their success because they deserve to actually walk around with all their trophies and take every minute that they deserve right yeah but to and i don't care if they're not a competitor but as long as you come in and you're willing to work hard that that is what gets me right yeah they may never ever step on stage but they go in there whoa and they just yes but then you can have some people come in and um, the first thing they say is, I don't really need to be here. <laughs> oh, okay, go on then, go on. I mean, you can put me through a leg session. I don't need it because, I mean, look at my legs. Oh, Jesus Christ. Say goodnight to the folks, Gracie. Oh, yeah, I had one. <laughs> Two. Um, but again, so then all they did was, I can't do it. I can't do it. Well, don't. Yeah. Just don't. Because this... This is pissing me off now. Yeah. If you want to come here and you work hard, I don't care if you're using one kilo or a thousand kilo. It's not about the weight, but it's the drive that you have to try and succeed, mm. to push yourself, to reward yourself whilst you're training. Yeah, there's nothing worse than like training somebody who clearly they they got a, already got a great physique and obviously great genetics, but they're lazy as fuck. 
it's so, so frustrating them, and yeah. then you've got another guy who's six stone ring and wet who just puts everything into it I'd much rather train yeah. somebody like that all day long yeah. than the, the somebody who's got the potential to be Mr. Olympia but is lazy as fuck you know yeah. and I, again talking about genetics I've seen so many people have, and I think fuck if I had what you had <laughs> I would have had that pro card and yeah. I would have been in pro shows yeah. you know 100%. and it, that annoys me then when it's somebody like that and yeah. but they're just fucking lazy so, as you say, really, on that point, then, what I love doing the best is people who are willing to try and watch them succeed. Mm -hmm. It doesn't at what level, at what, just for walking around, just for self-worth, the stage, as long as they're willing to, uh, you know, to work hard, and I can watch them do that, yeah. they're the best. Yeah. Good answers. Quite quick as well, for you, Reese. <laughs> I thought I could cap it. <laughs> <laughs> so we are at uh, GH Gym V2. Yes. yes. We're going to have to go there, aren't we? Yeah. yeah. Um, obviously, when I mentioned I went down to, to meet up and had a consultation, it was at GH Gym V1. Um, for those that don't know, I, I'll let you tell the story because obviously, you know, it's your story. So. I just remember seeing the picture on Facebook and thinking, oh my fucking God. And uh, I can't imagine how you both felt, obviously, seeing what happened. So, yeah. for the viewers that don't know what happened, kind of touch on it. So, what was the date? Let's let Mike answer this yeah. one, because you do it quicker. <laughs> yeah, what was the date? It was the first bank holiday of May 2019. So, it was around, so I think it was the 6th of May, mm. something like that. Anyway, so... The alarm system in the gym, occasionally it would just, we'd go off, we get, so it was monitored, we'd have a phone call saying the signal's gone down or the alarm's been tripped, whatever. Yeah. And normally it was a case of going up to the gym, um, which say about a 20 minute drive away from where we, because we literally live around the corner from the gym now. Mm -hmm. um, it was a case of just going up to the gym, resetting the alarm and that would be it. So, and this was midnight. Yeah. And I had a missed call on my phone from the alarm monitoring company. I said to Lisa, right, I'll just go and reset the alarm. I'll be back shortly. And she said, well, I'm awake. We were still dressed. They say it was around about midnight. Come on, let's, so. Mm. I didn't hang around, put it that way. I was probably in the, at the gym within about 10, 15 minutes. Yeah. As we drove on to the industrial estate, I could see smoke didn't register as we drove around the corner and you could see the gym it was just like a fire the flames were coming up through the roof mm. it was unbelievable so literally just stopped the car where we were rang 999 and they said we're aware somebody's already called we're on the way uh, and by the way, don't try and get into the gym <laughs> it's like are you fucking kidding <laughs> it, honestly yeah. so Six fire engines came, took them a good few hours to Six put it out. Six fire engines. Six yeah. fire engines. And you're just watching. And we were there for like four and a half years. Yeah. Um, and we were just kind of, it was a bit of a, a, well not, a, a rocky start to it. But we got it you know, going. It was kind of getting it to where we needed yeah. it to be. And then, obviously, the whole thing just went. Mm. Um, and really, I think the only thing I can take for it from it, it was just literally like watching a television programme. Because mm. we stood there watching it, and it was just the most surreal thing. Yeah. Because it was coming out the windows, it was coming out the door, it was coming out the roof, and just stood there watching the television. Yeah. Because it just, this can't be happening to us. Yeah. It was horrible, 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 horrible. When um, did you? Is that the first gym that you've had? Well, no, we had a small gym again, not too far from here. Um, it was a little place. Yeah, it was a shithole. The guys who they there was equipment there, but they used to just have a key outside, and people used to let themselves in and throw two quid in a tin. Oh, right, okay, yeah. So, so the, the first like. I, Proper, yeah, proper gym. Was yeah. gym. Yeah. We've run gyms for other people, yeah. etc., and PT'd and all the rest of it. But that was kind of yeah. yeah. I mean, that was what it was about six thousand square foot. That um, yeah. 
property and obviously all the years that you'd put in to building everything you put into that place so I can't yes. imagine to see that going up in flames I think the worst from it because because everybody was nobody was hurt so that was the best part yeah equipment stuff like that that could be replaced it was it but it was our oh. history every lanyard we'd picked up from every show every judging pass every so um qualification certificates it's just everything that was the bit that was heartbreaking because yeah. that shit we'd never get back it's the little things it's not the materialistic yeah, things yeah. it's the little yeah, yeah, things yeah, yeah. um yeah. but then <laughs> we were at body power it was body power the following weekend Oh, and we yeah. travelled up there on the Thursday. following Thursday. Mm. So obviously it was Monday, like early hours that the fire happened. And people were like, why are you, why are you even here? Well, we That's can't what, do was, anything. My next question was going to yeah, be, why did you go? I know Laz had a few comments of, oh, it was an insurance job. And I mean, to those people, I don't think I've ever said this on camera, you can go fuck yourselves because they don't realise how insurance works. Mm. And if yeah. you know us... Like fuck was it an insurance job? <laughs> yeah, when when it happened to me, there was a few people saying it to me, and I was like, I know Mike and Lisa. Yeah, exactly. It's, not, it's like what? Yeah. No. What? No. Why would we invested all that time? And I mean, six till ten. We were there every minute, yeah. every waking minute. Were we fucked? Of course we were fucked. Did we love it? Of course we fucking loved it. You know, but we spent more time there than we did in our house. Yeah. You know, at home. So that was our home. That was home your home, for, yeah, yeah. And yeah. that's why I'm a, I'm a fucking prick in there. In as far as you've come into my home. You don't disrespect my home by leaving your weights everywhere. If you want to do it in your own house, no sweat. Yeah. Back off and do it in your own house. But even then, when the, the fire service said, right, can you come and have a look? So we went round the back, and I mean, it was just carnage. You know, there was equipment that was just completely wrecked. It was, it was absolutely beyond words, soul destroying. It was heartbreaking. And um, even though when he did it, and he opened it up, and, he, and they'd cut the roller shutter door open, to go in there and do it and they said um oh you know i'm afraid we've we've done that damage we've done that he said what's the matter i said it's a fucking 25 kilo plate there that 25 kilo plate doesn't belong there he went are you serious i went <laughs> yeah <laughs> he said you've got all this carnage <coughs> around you and all you're concerned about is that 25 kilo plate don't belong there because it just it even then it still didn't the register real, yeah the severity and the size of the problem yeah but you know we had a couple of days you know i cried a little bit i was gonna ask how did you cope after that lisa better than me because obviously we're at body power the the initial bit then obviously everybody was talking about it at body power so by the time that weekend was over mm. it was like we were sick of talking about it so that the the actual fire itself cool but then Lisa went to a local gym and was carrying on at PTs, obviously because clients yeah. have already you know, paid for sessions, etc. So she went straight back to work. Then I was like trying to find new premises and deal with the insurance, and which is a bloody minefield in itself. And like, yeah, I, I'd have, uh, I had some yeah. bad times because I was like, oh, fuck this, mm. you know, because yeah. we went to, we went to Dubai the first time of, I think it was, yeah, end of June, beginning of July that year of 2019. Um, stayed with Jamie. Um, obviously, because of Jamie, we we had something like about 15 sessions booked before oh, we went. Over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we ended up doing 40 sessions in like a week because yeah. people yeah. were seeing us in the gym. And you know, so it was great. But the, when I was doing, trying to deal with the insurance and look for premises, in the end, I was like, fuck this. I said, let's just jump on a plane and go to Dubai. And Lisa was like, great. Yeah, we're kind of um, sort of like hot at the moment or, for, or whatever. But then what happens when that goes? Mm. Mm. You know, so it was like, yeah, okay. Yeah. Like, she, had to, yeah. she had to have a little word with me. And so I pulled my big boy's pants up and, um, you know, but yeah, I, I had a bit of a harder time yeah. through it all, I think. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But of course, then it was going into weeks, then into months that we didn't have anywhere. 
And in the end, because he's still dragging his feet, and in the end, I said, right, listen to me and listen good. You find me a fucking premises within a week because I am not paying somebody else the money that should be going into our own business. Mm. I bet you got a week. <laughs> fucking hell, have that, Mike. <laughs> yeah, within a week. We were here. Yeah, so in where we are now, uh, it's like two units, but I literally cleaned out this side that we're in as much as possible. Yeah. Started to get beg, it, borrow, it? steal equipment, and then so Lisa could do her PTs, and then I we were working on the big unit the big next one, door yeah. then, yeah. which was originally uh, like a car garage. Yeah, so it was the, the bus, bus company. Bus company yeah. They used to repair the. There was an eighteen meter long pit in the main gym. I remember the pit. Yeah, yeah. When you first um, got it. Because yeah. funny enough, I just caught a video whilst funny enough when I was downstairs of some of the starting points and shit here so here was a shit long old. roads oh yeah the videos of us covered in rat shit and yeah. but it was again we did it together yeah we did everything together and i think that's why it works obviously because you've been together for so long your way of dealing with shit though i think is just to fucking dive into work and always yeah. Just keep going, just keep going. And as I said, nice. I shed a few tears the first day, and yeah. then I was right, right. That's enough of that now. I can't change it. I can't make it better. Yeah. Right. So let's let's go. Let's just yeah. go. Come on. And I, but I, that's as you exactly say. That's my way. If anything, if anything's not going right, to be honest. just with dealing with shit. Yeah. Yeah. And sitting here today now in GAHV2, would you change it? If you could go back, like taking out the emotion of obviously the fire and you know how horrendous that was for you, where you are today. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, if you just look at it objectively, I mean, yes, okay. To cut a long story short, we probably ended up with about it's about hundred and ten thousand less than what we should have had from the insurance. It's like it's just insure the way it works. Okay. Yeah, shit, yeah, yeah. So then. Um, but where we are now, one, we're literally round the corner from where yep. we live. That's one positive. Exactly. Absolutely. And if you come along the main road um, here, t when you turn off to come onto the site, there's loads of residential housing estates. So it's kind of probably a better catchment area. Yeah. Um, so, again, we've just made the best yeah. of any situation yeah, yeah 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 would would i change it i can't so what's the point of saying yeah i would have but what it did through it all is again probably highlighted just how passionate we are about it because you said yeah we could have easily just got on a plane and thought fuck this shit and gone over and made ridiculous money yeah but is that really fulfillment mm -hmm. no no the hours that we spent in here literally wading through shit and rubbish, I wouldn't have changed that for a moment. Because again, it's it just highlighted how much we wanted this place, but just how fucking good we are together, you know? Yeah, even, um, so obviously that was, we got, we signed the lease September 2019. So when you actually look at that from where we had the fire to where it's like, that actually isn't that long. It just felt like yeah, fucking felt forever. forever yeah. um, and then in November, beginning of December that year, we kind of opened up but didn't advertise or anything because it wasn't where we needed it to be. Yeah. And then obviously lockdown happened then yeah. the following March. Mm. But that lockdown did us a favour because obviously we couldn't open. And then we had the gym pretty much where we needed it oh, to so be you could, then you could do all the work that yes. was needed and also to get it yeah. where it for us to be. that lockdown was brilliant because we were yeah we were doing work on the gym but we could train when we wanted yeah, you yeah. know so it was yeah. that was nice you, you <laughs> so were living the dream yeah yeah, yeah. full-time bodybuilder yeah. lifestyle yeah. except we had no income but you know who cares <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> you don't need that half yeah. the fuckers out there i'm got income anyway they're fucking living off their parents <laughs> But to be able, and I know it sounds, but it was literally our own private gym. Yeah. But to get off a piece of kit and come back on it when you want to use it the next time, when it was still fit. And guess what? 
all those 25 kilo plates were probably in the right place. They're in the right place. They are now as well. (laughs) Let me tell you. And I probably would say that's something that brings people here as well, is you can go in there at any time, day or night, and every plate is where it belongs, every dumbbell where it belongs, every handle, every bar. Because as you say, but that comes that filters from the that comes from the top and it just filters through to the bottom. A couple of people I knew, knew came down here over Christmas and yeah. they were like, Fuck, it's a tight ship down here. I was like, Yep. I was like you, she wasn't even there and you could feel her presence. I was <laughs> kinda of dr- I knew there was a load of people came in for our uh, single sessions on Christmas Day. Yeah, yeah. So I came at boxing morning thinking, Oh, it's gonna be a mess, you know, because there's people who don't normally come to the gym because their gyms were shut. I literally had to put one bench, move slightly, and yeah. put one handle back. And I was like, and I cleaned two toilets, which is, you'd expect yeah. that, you know? So I was yeah. like, yeah. So I think maybe the reputation kind of proceeded. Oh, definitely, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Sorry. <laughs> but that's good. It's a yeah. good thing. It's a good thing for it to be. Yes. It's it's really it's, and that's what I said, it's certainly a better workout for the people who are down there yeah, because yeah. you know two dumbbells are going to be together. Yeah. Whatever handle you want is going to be exactly where you expect to get it. Yeah. You know, you haven't got to move a load of 20s to get to that five kilo plate that you want behind it. Everything's in the right place. Yeah. So your workout's better. It's better for me as a coach, a personal trainer, whatever, because, and as I say to all my clients, you don't pay me to strip other people's weights away. No. So... I don't expect us to have to do it. Yeah. Now, so everybody does it. On the topic of training, because we don't want this to be about training anyway, because it's fucking far too much bullshit being on posted online. But um, we all know your ethos with training, which is uh, somewhere on the wall, probably in you. Just fucking train. Just fucking train. Yeah, it's, it's around somewhere. Yeah. Um, quick, quick overview on the shit that we're seeing online with training methods. I know you post quite a bit about. You know, I know about the squats with um, when I came down last oh, week. Oh, with James. With James yeah, and, yeah, yeah. You know, doing a, you know, just fucking squat yeah. or whatever. Yeah, I think, again, people are trying to baffle. I, there was a video, I think the late, latest one we put up, and there was a comment on, oh, it's nice to see you just talking plainly. Mm-hmm. Everyone tries to come up with jargon and, yeah, I mean, don't. Don't get me wrong, right? I've got a first class honours degree in, in applied sports science. Yeah. So I could use all the fucking jargon you want. Yeah. But I used to hate it having to write in that scientific way that most people, if they picked that up, wouldn't be able to understand. You know, like thinking back to like 20 years. Yes. I'm going to call them meatheads, right? Meatheads didn't used to talk like this, did they? No. No. So, so there's a guy, um, Elite FTS, um, a guy called Dave Tate. He was a, one of the world's best powerlifters, trained in um, uh, West Side, but he also trained with Meadows when he yeah. couldn't compete anymore um, in powerlifting. But he calls himself a washed up meathead. A washed up meathead, <clears throat> yeah. Essentially, that's what I am, you know, because you still love to train and, you know, just push yourself really hard just for the sake of it yeah um and when you look at it the people who get the best results are the ones who train the hardest yes and it doesn't matter you know there's different methods of training and i think if you find the one that clicks with you and you can put that passion into it fucking on paper it might not be the best method but if you know you see it all the time people have like their training plans on their phone oh, yeah, and yeah. they go Ugh. And i go what's the matter <laughs> uh well my plan says i gotta do this today yeah well what do you want to do and then they get all enthusiastic yeah. oh i want well go and fucking just do that do it, yeah. you know that's when you'll get the results yeah. yeah i think you just need to get to a point with your training and that's where you know being around people like yourself where you can learn properly how to train hard then when your season's off that's when you can start mixing it up and, yeah. and putting everything in and going back off field one of our old karate instructors um, Dave Hazard I mean incredible guy um, but he used to go around the world 
and would train in, uh, go to little villages in Cambodia and learn their training style. And he'd, oh, I put that into my yeah. my karate oh, yeah. teaching. Now the style of karate that we did was very regimented, and you know had its own style and whatever. But then to hear him say that, it's like, oh yeah, I'll I'll take that mm. and it's the same with training you can pick so many bits yeah. up off different people yeah and then when you get that experience it's like oh yeah i like that but what if i do you know and that's what we've done essentially yeah. over the years yeah. you know yeah. so many people are stuck in like camps now yeah who people are calling camps you know that yeah, yeah. Doing this, high volume that. low volume yeah, you know you've got the two extremes yeah. there and that's what i said there's no right or there's no wrong yeah the wrong way is to do it as Mike said, in a way that you don't get that fulfillment in yeah. your heart. Yeah, if you're not yeah? enjoying it. hundred percent. The right way is when you do get it, whether you do it through high reps, high weights, whatever. As long as you feel you can apply what you want to that activity and get the results you want, that's the right way. Yeah. But, go on. No, I think, again, looking at training and you, what you see now on social media is people doing a video on somebody else's video and like really picking it apart yeah. and whatever and it, that annoys me to fuck yeah I mean don't get me wrong I've seen some stuff and I go oh for fuck's sake fine but they're happy doing their thing yeah, that's yeah. cool you know um, but they're, they're trying to make big themselves up to try and get more clients and you know yeah, yeah. I mean the yeah. information like when we give out training information like I said I'm not coaching anybody anymore I don't, I'm not doing it to get more clients. Yeah, I don't give yeah. a flying fuck. I just want to yeah. give people the benefit of our experience. Yes. Yeah. yeah. End yeah. off. End off. And as you say, we've done it heavy. We've done it reps. We've done it off, in, out, shake it all about. Friggin', you know, push, pull, legs. But chest. have you done the super slow mo? But you've got to feel. The handle pull down. Yeah, but you've got to, obviously, you've yeah, got to hold you're at You're holding same time. here and it's got to like hold it. Yeah. Yeah, just to, just to make sure your obliques are coming in to help. <laughs> That's, That's the one. Fucking. That's the one, Lise. <laughs> but my advice two things. One, find out what a muscle does. When you know what that muscle does, you'll be all right. And two, Look at the sport you're doing. If you want to go and play football, you don't pick up a fucking rugby ball. There's weights, we're all moving weights. Football, rugby, they both got a ball, two totally different sports. Yeah, and as he said, when you realize what sport you actually want to be in, if you want to move weight, fucking go for yeah, it. Yeah, powerlifting, bodybuilding, yeah. two, two different, different sports. sports. They both use weight. Yeah, and as we said, that's when my advice would be. I mean, obviously, um, you've seen that I'm working with all sorts of people at all sorts of levels. But even, even at a very top level, just to do something and for your clients to go, shit, fuck, yeah. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Job done. Job done. Fuck them. That's what I say. <laughs> <laughs> on my note. <laughs> Moving on. Congratulations on being Miss Nabba. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Might have to you. come back. <laughs> but the, the first... Female, so when you're uh, become an area rep, yeah. So obviously, this is the area rep for Wales. You're on the NABA council, the committee. She's the first female since 1948 to Jesus. ever be on. <laughs> yeah. So as we stand, that's history making, mm. which I feel. very honoured to clearly be of a standing that they're happy for me to be part of the committee yeah yeah because that is a that's a big step when you think of all those years of history in that one association and um, I've just been offered the opportunity to change that oh my god mm. <laughs> the fuck out but <laughs> but what, a, what oh yeah. you know there's not obviously you're not Lisa can put her points forward on the committee, but of course it's a committee decision. It goes yeah, to a absolutely. vote. So by Lisa being on there, it's not as though oh NAB is going to be. Ch of course it's not. No. It's no. you know it's a committee and you know. Yeah. But even by taking that step to vote a woman onto it, that's clearly a big step. Yeah. yeah. And it shows what impact or yeah what impact you've got as well. For them hopefully, to you know. Hopefully. Um, because 
I will, I will 100% take more to the table mm. because I, as you say, I have the history. I have to look at it from the competitor's point of view. I have to look at it from a female's, female competitor's point of view, but also from a female that has head judged, been judging for quite some time, has been a competitor, still is a prep coach. What the, the athletes want, how social media is moving and how we communicate with people now. Mm. That is something that's moving very, very fast. And I hope I can bring that understanding to NABA. Yeah. That when you go on a website now and you want to compete, you have your membership form, you have your entry form, you have your tan, you make it, it's all there for you. Yeah. And people um, want that availability because we shop like that now. Yeah. Click, click, like click. Like we said, pay. pot noodle generation. Yep. Yeah. Just, but yeah. that's where we are. Yeah. So even if um, I can try and encourage that into um, some of the methods and how they think, well, that's bringing them forward. Yeah. You know, but also it's going to make my job easier as the rep, having my competitors have the ability to do this, this, and this click. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's just knowing things from different angles is where we are anyway well if i can offer that we'll yeah winning the good thing with you guys is like obviously because you've been involved with certain federations throughout the years you know the ins and outs of what's made them and broken them we'll, yeah. leave, we'll leave it at that but you've you've you know what works what doesn't you got your boy wonder on the camera and the visuals so yeah. obviously you know your graphics and all that stuff is going to be tight as well um, and I can, all, like, from an outside looking, and I can already see a difference with the social media and everything. I, I can see the, the way it's going to be headed, so it's exciting. It is, it is, and I really just hope that we can still instill that passion into a new federation yeah. that we've been lucky enough to be part of and still in other federations yes. and other federations which of you say as you say have been we've been so lucky to have such amazing experiences you know probably our best friends we've met through bodybuilding but having the ability to meet people mr olympia and below mm -hmm. you know i am so grateful every single day that we've had those opportunities but now that's given us the experience to offer these to other people. Yeah. You know, and, and it is, it's a brilliant, brilliant sport. Feels a full circle moment for you with, yeah. with this, I think. Well, yeah, yeah I, <laughs> I won the overall NAB of Wales in 1998. Uh, I won it in 2012. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, but then to go back yeah. and actually be part no, of, yeah, no, you know, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's definitely like a full circle yes. moment, it's cool. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think there's anyone else in Wales that could hold that spot. If I'm honest. And, you know, I thank you for that. You know, and I really do. You deserve it as well, so. You I know, think so. because we haven't done this all these years for these sort of honours. Yeah. We were bloody hard for them. You know, and whatever anybody says, how they can, as you say, going back to the, whether the keyboard warrior or spectator warrior or whatever. Yeah. We do this day <laughs> after day we used after to, day. Um, people used to think, so we did the Arnold Europe every year for about six, seven years. Seven years. Um, and people used to say, oh, look, they're going on their jollies again, going to Madrid. <laughs> and it's yeah. like, if you know, if you know, fuck it, if you yeah. know I mean, we'd register the first Friday it would be 16 hours registering competitors, a thousand competitors oh, from wow. all over the world. Yeah. You know, you didn't get a break for food, let alone, you know, and if you wanted to go to the toilet, you'd run and run, you know, it was brutal. Yeah. And mm. people think you're going on your jollies. On your jollies, yeah. you yeah. know. But then, out of those experiences, I used to help with the pro show then. Yeah. So at that show, I mean, the one time, I was actually on stage with Phil Heath, Kai Green, you know, when Kai wouldn't get on his place when he came second yeah. and I had 4,000 people screaming behind me. But then how many people, okay, I wasn't posing against them, but I was on yeah, stage no, no. with those it's a big guys, moment, then. It's you know, a and talking moment. to them backstage and, you know. Yeah. yeah. Even when I see, I've seen Phil a few times since and he'll always come up and speak and, you know, yeah. ask how we are yeah. and, you know. So those experiences, you know, yeah. have been fantastic. 
Even yeah. lucky enough when I put, you know, you put up on Instagram and I talk shit, and Flex, you know, will yeah, always yeah. message and, and stuff like that. And again, you know, it's in our hearts. Yeah. You know, it really does. But even, you know, how many people would fly literally all the way to Kuwait, do two days there, fly all the way back through the night, get changed in the services into another judge's uniform to drive straight to another show. You know, that's what we do. Mm -hmm. You know, and we certainly don't do it for the fucking financial reward because there isn't any. Yeah. You know, we don't do it for the shits and gigs. We do it because we fucking love it and we love the people that are on stage. They are the ones that have always driven me. Mm. It's not the people who have stood, you know, as part of the Federation team. It's not the ones that are behind me hurling abuse. It's not them. It's for those people up there to make sure they get the best time they can. That's mm. what keeps us going. And that, that question that was asked, what's the secret to running a show? Oh, yeah. That's it. <laughs> yeah. There yeah. we go. We answered one off yeah, Instagram. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and it is. Because it, it's just to know that we've allowed you to showcase your hard work mm -hmm. to run that show as best we can and to make sure your family and friends are there to watch you showcase your hard work that's why we do it mm -hmm. that's why we do it because i remember what it was like for me to feel like that yeah you know and probably the same for you yeah well i get that i because i'm on stage normally at most of the shows yeah i kind of get that more firsthand than anybody else because i'm stood like right next to the competitors and you yeah think, yeah I, I remember that yeah yeah that's cool yeah love it well we're on the topic of competitors i can't do this podcast without talking about myself because it is my podcast so i can do what i want <laughs> <laughs> what what do you think um, you don't have to go into too much detail but I remember you always bring this up right is that when, when I first used to come down here and I'm a little YouTube going on and I'd be driving down and talking on camera and that which you still yeah. love to grill me about D did you think that person in that gym talking on camera coming down here to train and have a sessions would still be going at it now did you see anything then 100% because you wouldn't have fucking come otherwise you wouldn't have come. Mm. Yeah, you would have been happy in your own little world, in your own little bubble, mm. pushing your shit on social media. Sorry. Um, but you didn't. You took yourself out. You, again, you were on the, um, the journey of the thirst for success. Yeah. Yeah? And as you say, going back nine years and trying to find people that you knew could take you further. Mm. Um, whereas now... We don't. No, we no. We don't. But you didn't. You came out of your comfort zone. You came searching for something to take you to another place. Yeah? You listened to everything we had to say with such... Yeah, you were like a sponge. Yeah. Yeah, and not... And again, not with naivety, not with any disrespect to you or to us. It was very much um, a mutual respect for each other. Because again, you took yourself out to find. And so we just felt or I certainly felt, that we were in a position to guide you into finding what you wanted. Yeah, yeah and... But even those early yeah. sessions, you trained hard. Yeah. Yeah, and you, yeah. You, But you did, and you can... You know then when somebody's got that, because not everybody can do that. Mm. And I think maybe some people can learn, but you already had it in you. Mm. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, well, if you carry on yeah. Yeah. doing that, and keep doing it for nine years, then yeah. mm. you know you're gonna you're gonna improve. You have to. Yeah. Yeah. And obviously, you came a couple of weeks ago when we had a chat and everything. Yeah. You know, and I put that out there anyway, so you can talk about it. No, no. Yeah. And is this physique finished? No. I told you that then. The job was not done. Yeah. Yeah. Can you keep improving? Yeah. Because you want to. That's the thing. You want to improve. When the day comes that you don't want to improve, yeah. it's done. Mm. We say this a lot. The time you look at yourself in the mirror and think, yeah, I'm perfect now, well, you may as well jack it in. Yeah. Because yeah. nobody is ever perfect as far as bodybuilding goes. Nobody. Mm -hmm. Like even, you know, Mr. Olympias, they can always improve something. Yeah. Mm. So, and, and that's the beauty of bodybuilding. There's always something to improve. Yeah. So the time that you think you're perfect, well, then you may as well. Yeah, when you hit that, like, wall of complacency. In yes. It. Yeah. Yeah, 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 that's it. Yeah. And yeah. is the drive still in you? 
A hundred percent, yeah. I had a moment, obviously, but it wasn't like the drive had gone. It was like I was scared to have the drive, I think. Yeah, yeah. And, which but, makes total sense. Yeah, but makes now it's sense. like, yeah. yeah, now it's like the hundred percent. So, um, back at you. So, nine years later, where do you think your physique's going? Where do I think my physique's going? Yeah. It's going in the right direction. Yeah. It's definitely come on the last, like, I think since I um, started thinking about it a little bit more in terms of being a bodybuilder, that's when it kind of started improving dramatically, which I'd say is the last four years. Yeah. I, I obviously approve, I improved those first initial years, but then the last four years, I think, well, everyone has said, like, the difference in the last few years has been, and I think that's just because I've, self-belief maybe, because something I always say, and I do always, always say it, is this sport is 70-30, right? 30% is physical ability. Two arms, two legs, a tick, we're all right, we got that. The rest of it, that other 70%, what goes on up in yes, there. Yes, yeah. You know, and I totally understand and respect if people want to stay as a class, whether it be um, classic, men's physique, bikini, what, total respect for you. But it's almost as if then, to a certain extent, you're trying to keep this round peg in this square box, mm -hmm. yeah? But then sometimes when you think, do you know what? I do this because I love that and I'm ready to see where my physique will go. Click. Yeah, the, it's go. the mental side of it, definitely. I mean, when I did my sports science degree as a mature student, as in my 30s when I went back to uni, but my the head of the department, because I, like, I used to go for coffee with him and, and we'd always have these conversations and he'd say um, that psychology was unexplained physiology. I don't buy that. I'd say that it was the, it's the other way around. You know, if you've got the right psychology, you can change your physiology. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. yeah. Where your mind goes, your body follows in, in layman's terms. One example in that in particular. Now, we all know Eddie Izzard. I'm sure everybody probably knows about this, right? That guy, not the best shape, you know, wouldn't say he was an athlete of any sort, but he decided he was going to run 26 marathons in 26 days. Mm. And that guy did it. I saw that, yeah. On paper, on everything. He should never, ever have done it. Ever. But he did it because mm. that's what he said he was going to do. That's what he decided to do. And that's what he fucking did. Yeah. Yeah. Overtraining. Going back to training for today. Overtraining. Pull back. If that's what truly what this this needs, right, we wouldn't have a pyramid. There would be no Great Wall of China. Nothing. Because then we just kept fucking working. There was no engineering that got those pyramids up. It was hard work. It was just mm. people's hands. Bits of rope and a bit of ding and a fucking donkey. Yeah. Right? Well, take your donkey in a fucking gym and keep going. <laughs> Get on. Yeah? But yeah. as you say, the, your drive again and enthusiasm for success in this body mm. is what keeps yeah, you going. Yeah, we were going, supposed to be uh, the, one of the first, I think it was the first Fit Expo where we were doing some live training sessions and we were supposed to be putting somebody through i remember this person i think yeah you know good you know and but his coach at the time or or that might be that might be too hard don't do that and it's like what <laughs> yeah it <laughs> what? doesn't make sense does it because no. all we know is hard yeah, yeah. It's supposed to Any, be anything what? worth having is fucking hard do yeah. what's that oh yeah <laughs> no my rest days are still fucking training days for me anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but as you say, we can take it. Yeah. We're, we're workhorses. We're designed to work. Yeah. It's just as we've evolved, we've become lazy. You know, the photograph of um, 1972, Brighton Beach. Have you seen it? No. When it's just absolutely rammed. Just normal people. Oh, this okay. beach is rammed and there's bikinis and um, swimming shorts and there's just, you know, people with ice creams. And everybody goes, right, what's missing? There was six packs on men, physical hard workers. They're all the bikinis on lovely little women. And I, 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 I'm trying to be as politically correct as possible. But what was Don't. missing? There was no obese people. There was nobody overweight. In 1972, you worked the roads. You worked the road with a shovel. Mm. You know, we all tended our gardens. We all Nobody does anything no, anymore. No. You know, you've got up to turn the television over. That's the thing of the fucking past, isn't it? You know, well, so so if we don't actively work 
digest through our day to day living working there instead then yeah you know yeah make up for it yeah right so we're gonna move on to these Instagram questions because we've got uh, a little bit of time left but we'll do a quick fire you I think you've replied to some of them already when I was driving back yesterday because you replying to the comments on the post that we put up on Instagram all right yeah but no I didn't answer the didn't questions answer them, no, no, no no but we'll go through them, them uh, quick fire for you Instagram? <laughs> What's she say? It's social media, darling. <laughs> okay, okay. Instagram? What's that? <laughs> right. They were great at judging the FitX South Coast. What's the secret to put on a good show? We've done that. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. That's okay. Uh, right. Let me go back to the. Let me go back to the Instagram archive. Can you just explain to Lisa what the Instagram archive? Is? Was there any um, questions on the stories? Yeah, yeah. that's what I'm going to yeah, go yeah. through now. Yeah. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Oh, stop shaking your fucking leg <laughs> Dick Keep going I've seen you give him a few times <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking shaking my leg away Right Do you prefer show day as a judge or competitor Competitor and why Thinking back to the uh, competing days uh, It's just that's just, It's just a totally different Completely different Experience yeah. Um yeah, yeah, I always used to love competing. Mm. I think um, I think if we if you were still competing now, and also doing judging like some people do, that's when you could probably truly answer that question. Yeah, like, I don't think I ever judged and no and competed at the same yeah. time. Right. So looking at it, say um, one of my judges sat next to me. Yep. Right. In off season, they're a much better judge. When they're sitting next to me in prep, <laughs> they're not quite as good, right? And not because their ability to judge, they can become a little bit, um, you can see them, a little bit anxious. It's food time coming up now. Yeah. I really need the toilet. So, they're, not their concentration, but they're, it's about them. Yeah. When you're on prep, it's about them, and I totally respect that, right? But speaking uh, for me as an individual, once I left the stage, I knew I had got to, and I was as good as I could be, which was, with no disrespect, pretty fucking average, right? Um, but then when I came, when I finished, competed, I'd already started judging, but this, Ooh, hang on, this, this, this fired something different inside me. So I still, as Mike said, I still eat as if I was on prep. I still do my cardio every day. I still train as if I, that has not changed. Yeah. But I know this physique and this body could only have got to where I did, right? But where I could take judging, now that was something else. So we all have goals in life, right? And we both know, and through karate, when you, you fight somebody, you know if you can beat them or not, right? But then you get to a certain point that somebody comes out and you think, oh shit, right, I'm gonna fucking up my game on this one. I'm gonna have to. When you get to that level of competition in your physique, you go, oh shit, man, that fucker's beat me, right? Okay, well let's take it from a different angle, right? So my goal and my drive is still about judging. Yeah. IFBB judge, national and international. We qualified as pro league judges, um, equivalently qualified NABA judge. We were part of the team that formed the PCA, head judge with them, head judge with FitEx. Um, I did head judge with NABA Wales before I got to the line of um, being um, area, rep. area rep. I always wanted to judge the Olympia. I would have done anything to judge the Olympia. That's why even when we, I kept going on it, and you got to do more internationals, right? Can I go pro judge now? No, no, you got to do more internationals. Well, right, okay, I can't go in. And I just kept going and going and going. And I mean, as Mike said, Judge Arnold and everything else. And I can remember one in particular. Were you doing the Europeans or the Worlds, that one? Or competing? Yeah. Oh, uh, it was a Europeans, yeah. And I said to the head judge, um, Pavel, um, Pavel, my husband is competing in the so-and-so class. 
Um, I said, I feel I should back away. He said, you're a good judge, you judge it. He said, because yeah. I know you'll judge it right. And she did, placed me bloody fourth. How no, but... <coughs> but again, but then what did all... you say to me when you came off the stage? Yeah, she said, well, I had you fourth. So, but then you you do the pre-judging. If you made the top six, you do the finals the next day. But you started from scratch then. So she said, right, tomorrow's another day, you know. But I, I mean, I ended up fourth. But as a competitor, I mean, yeah, I prefer to be judged where, you know, yeah, I was probably around about, I would have had myself around about that, yeah. you know, looking at it. I would rather not be gifted a so, win. Sorry. So with that in mind, for all those people out there that go in, oh, I don't know shit, I'm biased and all that, go fuck yourselves. Because <laughs> if I can put him fourth, where he deserve to be, I will put everybody where they deserve to be. Yeah. I will not, absolutely not, and I try to influence anybody or anything else because that is not helping. That does not help. No matter what your coach says, the judges don't know shit, you should have done this. It's a panel of judges, and if the panel of judges think you belong fourth, that's exactly what you'll yeah. be. Yeah. Fuck you. <laughs> I would tell you to do a mic drop, but uh, you <laughs> yeah. break, break my mic. <laughs> You've done it three times already yourself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> right. Please. Quick fire, they were. Go on, sorry, Bab. Quick, right, quick. <laughs> <laughs> What is the most common mistake you see when people pose? They don't know what the fuck to do with their bodies. Next. Go on, elaborate a little bit. <laughs> you can have a little bit. <clears throat> I'm a greasy judge. I start judging from the minute your foot touches that stage until it leaves again. But when you walk out, you give all the games away. Bellies are hanging down, bums are saggy, whatever. But then you start to... Ju- and when you walk out, you think, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, right, oh, hello. Hello, you got a good one, yeah? Right, let's have a look. We sit up. Hmm. Oh, well, that was pretty shit. Right, okay. So, if you've got a physique, please, please, please know what to do with it. Know what to do with it. Know how to get that lat lat spread. Know how to connect your hamstrings. When you uh, you do know how to do it, fucking stick with it. Because there's nothing worse when you have somebody go compared to because everyone wants feedback. Compared to number seven, number so, uh, oh, hamstrings are a bit soft. I look down, you've hit him again. I look back up, you're off him again. Right? We don't have a photograph. So when you come out on stage, hold that pose for however long the MC tells you. Yeah. If he says we got to do it 10 times, you you prepare for 10 times. Mm. This is your job. That's your job, right? Bit of advice to anybody out there. As a competitor, it's your job to hide your weaknesses. As a judge, it's my job to find it. Don't make it easy for me. Yeah. Yeah? And so that's the most frustrating part is seeing a physique that you know is going to be good and doesn't know what to do with it. Pose to what suits your physique. And that's a problem I see with some, not all, but with some posing coaches. They only pose everybody in exactly the same way. Yeah. And it doesn't suit that person. Yeah. Fair one. 100%. Thoughts on the current ways with nutrition, adding cereal, bagels, on top of oats and rice? <laughs> quick now. This is a quick one. Whenever a question like this comes to me and everybody, a, a, an eating plan is coming, I'll always go back to... Um, it was the last body power, wasn't it? One of the I, so yeah, I was lucky enough to do. I was doing a Q and A with Flex Wheeler. Yeah. On, on like, again, one of those great opportunities. So yeah. I was doing the Q and A. So big audience, lovely. What a guy! What a guy! Arguably, for some people, the best bodybuilding physique yeah. silhouette that ever was. Right. Lovely. Right. And uh, question was, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Wheeler. Um, could I ask um, um, what you eat um, on prep? He says, yeah, chicken and rice. What do you eat um, off season? More chicken and rice. <laughs> so the, the guy was like, is there more to it? No, no, no. It was just chicken and rice and it would be more or less. Uh, I'd add seasoning, but that's a... Mr. Wheeler. 
Mr. Wheeler. In um, anywhere in the prep, I said, um, where did you place your pop tarts <laughs> or your um, cocoa pops or your obviously your bagels? Um, and oh, muffins, muffins. What about the muffins? He said, ma'am, it was chicken and rice. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> End of. There Next. we go. And if it's good enough for Flex Wheels, yeah. if you produce a physique like that, boys and girls out there, it's good enough for you. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody wants to see a new thing. Oh my God, mm. yeah. The guys, look at me with my pizza. Oh, do you want to mention the fact that you're fat burning regime? Do you want to mention any of that? But you can still eat your pizzas and you can still eat this, yeah? Bottom line, as we've said more than anything, it's very basic. As it is, hard work. Hard work. I like it. Oh, it's a training style question. Mm. <laughs> short, one. short one, right? Yeah. Thoughts on training style. Do you prefer shorter, high intensity sessions, high volume and higher frequency? Right, one answer for that, your time restraint. If you are under the time restraint of half an hour, you can get that workout done in half an hour. If you've got the ability to spend two hours in there with nothing else going on in your life, yeah? So methods and everything else, good, bad, indifferent, time restraint. I think if you're the person who, like we said, the hardest workers always tend to get the best results. So if you're a hard worker, by its nature, your volume is not going to be too high. Yeah. Because it can't be. You can train hard or you can train long, but you can't do both. Yeah. People might think they are, but then. No. 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 <laughs> no. <laughs> I've got one last question for you from Adam Cooper. Your funniest backstage story that you've seen, if you have any. Or funniest backstage moment, I think you might have said. Funniest moments backstage. We'll go for one funny moment if you've got one. You've got, have you got one? Have you? And hopefully it's not me having a nosebleed backstage after oh, one. Oh, fuck no, there's nothing wrong with that. I, don't think, it's that one. I think the worst one, the one backstage, it must. It started backstage, but it, she, it really should have been dealt with backstage. It was a little in between us moment when a guy came out and walked to me with his fucking left nut hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> That was what's known as a wardrobe malfunction. It wasn't me, was it? <laughs> no, yours was the right one. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Again, th- that was a bit of a... Oh. Oh, yeah. Right, Bloody okay hell. then. You know, Tuck it in, bud. 100%. But on a serious note, with it, than that. But, but just check yourself over before you come out. Yeah. Um, as a judge, I'm, I, and it was, I, it's something I will say. Boys... And girls, because unfortunately a girl came out with her bottoms on back to front and that was a little bit of an issue. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I remember going up to her on stage and saying, we knew the girl, it was a Scottish show. And I, I can't remember her name, but I went up and obviously I had my back to the audience. I said, uh, just go off stage and turn your, your bottoms around the right way. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, that's a, a funny one. That was Scot- Scotland. First year of bikini. Uh, so the girls it wasn't obviously backstage this was on stage but they could um, wear an off the peg bikini none of the bikinis that are around now were a thing so this girl there was a, li- a big lineup of bikini girls now I'm, I'm stood right next to her because it was a big lineup so um, court turned to the right court turned so she, as she turned to face the rear she had like tie sides on a bikini she caught it with a thumb oh, no. and it undid so I'm like, she managed to grab it, then I'm literally standing in front of her on stage while she does the bikini. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, stuff like that. It happens, yeah. Yeah. I suppose. Um, the, the only thing is, I will say, is a bit of advice again for men, sorry. Boys, we're not looking what's going on in the packet. You don't have to make it any bigger, add anything to it, or anything similar. Have you seen we, some of those? Oh yeah. Way too many. Yeah, One way too many. Sort of good experience and like, um, when I did the Arnold, um, so I was literally standing with Phil Heath as he's about to go on stage, and Hanny Rambod's just the other side of the steps, and Phil's going, Hanny, Hanny. And he's like, Yeah, what? And Phil hits a shot for him, and he's like, Yeah, you look great. You know, so, but even at that level, 
That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Those guys still need that reassurance. reassurance. Right, yeah. yeah. So they're the same yeah. Yeah. as all the rest of us. You yeah. know, when you're competing, they still have those same nerves. And, you know, so I, I tell that story quite often yeah. to mm. say, yeah, I know you're nervous, but there's, oh, right. And it yeah. kind of makes them feel a little bit better yeah. then, you know? Yeah. Awesome. Super awesome. cool. Right. I've taken enough of your time. <laughs> What's next? Me getting smashed up in there. Yeah. What are we doing? You got time? I always got time to fuck you up. <laughs> Shoulders today. <laughs> nice. Sweet. Cool. Yeah. Let's make them big. Yeah, we'll try. Uh, thank you very much for coming on. Pleasure. Telling welcome. your stories. Good luck with everything. With Naba, with the gym. Uh, obviously, we'll be seeing a lot more of each other, no doubt. Um, and yeah, appreciate it. Thank you very much to everyone for tuning in. Check Mike and Lisa out. It's Mike underscore Lisa underscore Gelsey. Yes, that's right. On Instagram. On Instagram. Um, Lars Gelsey on the visuals. Plenty of raw and real reels content <laughs> on there if you want to check it out. Lisa. Basically, Lisa swearing and. Uh, calling people out <laughs> but yeah thank you very much like comment subscribe follow the spotify and comment who you'd like to see me get on you next peace <laughs>